we're going to start with a slip knot just like that and then you want the loop to be about the size you can kind of get your hand into so it's about 10 centimeters or about three inches um, you don't have to be exact with this but um, you want the blanket to be nice and chunky and you don't want it too tight so about 10 centimeters for a stitch is a good guide and you don't need to leave too much of a tail on that now we're going to chain 13 so um, that will make the top of the blanket around 100 centimeters or 40 inches roughly so we've done one, two, three, four, five, six, and then if you need to just unravel as much as you can before you do any stitches. So eight, nine, ten, eleven. Have I done 12 or 13? I'm not sure. Oh, there we go. <laughs> there we go, 13. Now, because it's quite a small blanket, it's very, very easy to do on your dining room table. Or alternatively, if you wanted to do a larger blanket, then you could, um, you could do it on your bed or on the floor. Um, obviously, the floor is going to be dirty so if you have a spare sheet then just pop that down and that will be absolutely fine to use. So we've done our first chain and we're just going to flip it over and all these little bumps on the back here are going to be our, the next stitches we're going to go into. So we've got our loop at the end so we're going to get our yarn, we're going to leave that end loop and the next bump which is going to be in the middle of the stitch we're going to pull through from the top okay so we're going to pull that through as if we we would be knitting on needles but we're not we don't need any needles for this we don't need anything really we only need our yarn which is brilliant so we're just going to go one two and don't worry if it kind of gets a little bit crinkled up or if it goes out of shape a little bit you can always just straighten it out so all the way along these needy these bumps in the middle they are what you're going to be working your yarn into. And then you're going to pull through some loops of around our sort of two inch mark again. So just as long as they're all the same size, I like to do these quite kind of neat and small. Um, and you'll see why in the next part, because that's because it's the top of the blanket. Um, you don't really want any gaps here. So um you just pull through each one and don't forget the one at the end you don't even need to count these obviously you you know um, you're just going to stop when you get to the end and then you're going to turn it over again and when you turn it over it's got a beautiful kind of plait um, look at the top and that is going to be the top of your blanket and it just makes a lovely nice edge there so this one we are going to just leave out this loop here and it's going to make a lovely edge Okay, so we're going to go through from the back, the second loop, okay, and we're going to go the other way now. So we're going to go all the way across these loops to the left. And if you use this method, then it's easier to kind of, I usually just pull them upwards, so they're facing upwards. And it just makes it lovely when it kind of turns um, downwards when you're doing the ne next stitch along um, and it just kind of like tucks it in and makes it look nice um, rather than pulling it all the way down and it makes it nice and neat so there we go so again you're going to put that through the end loop and then you're going to just leave that one out <laughs> okay so you're going to go and that's going to make a lovely corner there so you're just going to do exactly the same thing each stitch from the back and just pull it upwards you can measure these if you want um, 
I don't tend to measure them now. I just kind of like pull. I try and just pull the same amount every time. But um, if you did want exactly the the right ones, then you could measure them. Um, what I like to do at the end, I like to sort of um, shake it out, and then I just pull out the stitches that are smaller, and you can even them up that way. This is such a beautiful mushroom pink colour. It's kind of like a taupe, but it has a little touch of pink into it. So when we get to the end, we're just going to do exactly the same. We leave that loop there, and then we go back down the row. And, and you can already see the stitch pattern start to form. And that's really good. I'm just checking if it's still 100 centimetres, which it is, or it's just under 100. Um, because it will sort of kind of <laughs> grow a little bit um, because the yarn has been so tightly packed into the ball it will expand a little and just as it goes into the blanket it will just get bigger and you'll see what I mean in it's very um these blankets are they've kind of got a life of their own they're kind of like they move and the stitches kind of like settle in different um, places and it's just a very beautiful object to have so it is lovely if you're you you know if you're making this for someone or if you're making it for your sofa it's just it's just a lovely thing to have it just looks beautiful and it is really 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 warm as well it's also one of those things where it kind of like feels like a weight on you so if you have if you have a baby or even a dog that you cuddle you kind of you're gonna know what I mean when you kind of have that thing sort of on you and it just makes it just feels really lovely so it's it kind of has that effect as well we're just gonna go all the way across again this actually doesn't take too long it should really it because it's such a um, big stitch it doesn't take as long as you would think so it only takes about I mean this one took me an hour um, but because I'm quite quicker than now um, but yeah this actually I would just leave about a couple of hours for it really so if you've got a spare afternoon that would be perfect and and you can kind of see the end the edge I mean <laughs> kind of forming really nicely so that's going to have a nice um, pattern like the top is the top line all the way along as well both sides and you can already see it forming you can move it backwards as well and kind of like do it on your lap um, I'm just doing this right really centrally to show you on the table but it's quite easy to do once you get going you it's it's so easy and it's very simple um, so I would really recommend doing these it's really fun So I've just unravelled some more yarn, just so it's easier to work with. You're going to find that if you have a, a gigantic ball of yarn, then you can't just um, make a project without unravelling it. So I've just unravelled um, bit by bit, just otherwise you get kind of a mass of yarn that's too heavy and unmanageable. So I've found the best way is to just um, unravel it bit by bit. And that works really well. So as you can see we've done quite a bit and you can see the rows forming now they look really really pretty and they're just lovely that knit look and also you can see the edges forming as well and if there's any kind of wispy bits or anything you can just pull them off or you can cut them with some sharp scissors. Like I said, it works up really quickly. I mean, this has only been about 10 minutes and we've done this already. So it is such a quick project to do and it's just so effective and kind of impressive at the end as well because the yarn is so beautiful.
If you're coming to the edge of your table, then you can always roll up the blanket like this and it saves a lot of space. So that's really, really good if you're working in a small space. I actually sometimes do this on my little skinny Ikea desk and it works really, really well. Okay, so I've just sped it up and I did exactly the same for each row all the way down. I'm just gonna measure this and it should be about 120 centimeters. Um, you can do it as long as you like, but just as long as what feels right for you. Um, so 120 centimeters is around 44 inches if you're doing the same one as me. And then all I'm gonna do is fasten off at the end. So for the end row, we're gonna do exactly the same as we have done before, but the loops on this row are going to be longer than usual. So where you've been pulling up each loop, you're gonna thread it through exactly the same, but you're gonna pull it down and you're gonna pull it down um, and so the loop is, I don't know, around one and a half times what you've been doing before. So you can see these ones are just hanging down at the end, they're longer than the other ones. And this will make sure that it doesn't bunch up at the end because all of these are exactly the same width as the stitches above but on the side. <laughs> You'll see what I mean in a minute. There is another way of doing this but I'm just doing it this way to show you. Okay, so you see what I'm doing? I'm just make sure they're all roughly the same size as well. I'm getting annoyed with this now. <laughs> And this is going to make a really, really nice edge for your blanket. There we go, all the way to the end one. Okay, then what you're going to do is you're going to take the end and just pass it through the second loop along like so then you get the next one and pass through exactly the same then you get the next one pass that one through and then it's going to form a nice corner there see and then you do exactly the same thing all the way along So I'm just going to cut the end of this and I always cut it on a slant because that looks kind of more natural than um, a chopped off end, blunt end. This is what it looks like when it gets pulled on. So I just cut it on a slant. And then you get the end and pull the loop through all the way so the tail's coming out. and then. You just put it through the first stitch up and then sort of put it through the same loop and pull and then you can put it through a couple of these just to secure it and then pull tight and that should make a nice little knot there underneath then just do the same thing just kind of like cut another end and then you're gonna you can either leave it kind of coming out if you want or you can add tassels to the end or you can just kind of like lose that in the back of the blanket There we are, nice finished edge. Now you can go over your blanket and just pull out any stitches that are uneven. So each kind of stitch along you can see they look like ears of corn and ideally you want them all to be all the same size. So any stitches that you think are not the same size, you, what I do is kind of like get the little one and pull it on it a little bit and that will come out nicely and 
um, any kind of larger ones you can tuck push in so they all line up and look lovely I've got a lot of work to do this on this one obviously but it just looks lovely when it's done you can also shake the blanket out which usually if you just stand up and kind of like give it a little shake then it evens out any stitches as well and you can trim any wispy bits that come out with some sharp scissors I really enjoyed making this I really hope you enjoyed this video too and thank you so much for watching I bring out a new video every Saturday so if you want to see more videos please like and subscribe and I'll see you next week Thank you so much.